Hello and welcome to another video on the channel and in fact this is my wrap up of my Quest 2 experience, uh, shall I say, this weekend. First of all I'd like to say a massive thank you to you guys for helping me out in the comments getting all this set up. Uh, I've learned so much this weekend and particularly with the uh, VR Aviator group on Facebook there's a guy called Ben who's been helping me out all day with various settings. And honestly, if you're watching this, thank you so much. None of this is any of my doing. This is just information that uh, you've been giving me. And I'm gonna try and explain the major things that's made a huge impact for me. I wanna say, first of all, I was wrong about the Quest 2's visual uh, clarity on Link. Honestly, I had my settings wrong. I was actually just using my uh, sort of default settings, which I think maybe a lot of people will do, you know, when they first try it out. So I think it was interesting to see that that was the case. But once you go into the Oculus settings, I'll put that on the screen now, you can see here I've set it to 90 hertz and the resolution's bumped right up 1.7, which is near its native uh, sort of resolution. In fact, I think it's a little bit over that. But the upshot is, is that that's the best way to uh, really bring out that beautiful crisp display because this headset has a very nice high resolution panel. If you try and do that in the tray tool, you won't get very far with it. In fact, you'll get pretty bad performance. So talking of the tray tool, I'll put that on the screen now. Some crucial things here. First one, set your uh, super sampling or I guess pixel density slider to zero. Just leave it alone. It's already looking amazing, it's fine. Unless you've got a very powerful computer and you can up that even more, go for it. But I'd recommend keeping that at zero. Then if you go down to the multiplier, the field of view, one thing I wanna say guys straight away, and I think this is quite a hammer blow actually, is I'd never expected to say this. I think the field of view on the Quest 2 is better than the Reverb G2. And I also think it's far better than the Rift S. I've been literally using all three headsets back to back all day. Uh, it's been a great day, <laughs> it's been a very interesting one. And it's not until you do that you realize the field of view difference. I don't know whether it's the face padding or not, but the Quest 2 has you know, a substantial field of view. I think this is the best headset I've had for the field of view. So you can actually take a bit of that away and gain a substantial 20 to 30 percent performance so if you put that to 0.7 or 0.8 you're not going to really tell the sides you're not even going to be able to see it you know actually where it's closed in and you're going to get a huge performance upgrade there so make sure you do that so that's the uh, main sort of tool page there but if you go down to the bottom i'll put that on the screen now make sure your bit rate is at 300 this is a big deal because uh, I didn't have that set and I was getting artifacts and compression and I could really see. That's why, why I said that uh, YouTube, it feels like I'm watching a 480p, you know, really bad quality video. Now it looks really nice. Now, please don't get me wrong. The Reverb G2 is the absolute best headset for this kind of thing that we do that is flying, flight simulation, and even, you know, PC games like Half-Life Alex and Medal of Honor. You cannot get a better experience than that. It is mind-blowing. It's an incredible experience. I cannot say that enough. If you've got the money and the PC hardware, get the Reverb G2, it is amazing. But for 300 pounds, you can get a headset that can actually, uh, you know, you can use flight simulators and your PC sort of uh, hardware pretty well. It does an amazing job actually, but also you can use it standalone. And as I say, I've had a fantastic time this weekend playing a number of different games. Just, you know, going into the living room. I even went outside in the garden today, <laughs> would you believe it? It was like, it was quite cold, but I just drew a boundary and I had this massive space. I've never had that before in VR. It's incredible. So really the conclusion is, I absolutely love the Quest 2. I am completely, completely taken um, back by it. I wasn't expecting to be impressed, uh, and particularly my first impressions of it, I was like, I'm not sure if this is gonna work out for me. But actually, it is a really amazing headset, simply because it's 300 pounds and it gives you a variety of different VR experiences, and it complements my Reverb G2, for me personally, as a sort of high-end device that I would use for the real, 
you know, incredible graphically intensive PC titles and, you know, of course, flight simulation. One thing I've got to say, though, I have to stand by what I said about the Rift S. If you've got a Rift S and you solely use it for flight simulation, to be honest, and you're happy with it, stick with it, I think. If you're not bothered about standalone VR, stick with it. If you're only interested in one high-end uh, high headset, get the Reverb, Reverb G2. <laughs> God's sake, honestly, I'm losing losing my words here because it's just, it just is a complicated affair, you know. But I have to say, the Quest 2 has won me over. Um, I think it's fantastic, and I don't know how it's going to look on the screen. But it's really smooth here. We're flying around LID, which is Burning Blue Design's brand new airfield. And what we'll do is we'll come in for a landing, actually. And I can see, really, a lot further out. Um, I don't know if, if you saw that I mentioned in my LID review, I was in the Rift S, and I was struggling to see what tanker that was out there. I don't have any screen door effect anymore on the Quest 2, so I can see really clearly what that type of tanker is. I can even see it's quite, it's a green tanker, and that one over there has got uh, containers on it as well. And then there was another one over here as well. And that, again, looks like, in fact, that's, I think that's a, uh, wow. I might have to try and land on that, actually. I think that's an aircraft carrier, I think. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So, yeah, I mean, look, the ground is beautifully smooth. This is the point, this is why I like the Quest 2 for this sort of flying. The Reverb G2 for me is the kind of headset that I'm gonna use for most of my flying when I'm looking inside the cockpit and I'm on long flights, because it's really great. But for VFR flying close to the ground, I can lock my asynchronous time warp down to as low as sort of 20 frames per second in the 90 hertz mode, and it's really smooth. And now I've got a really clear image. Then once I've had enough, I'll disconnect the headset and go and play a bit of, uh, well, not Beat Saber. I'm not a fan of Beat Saber, if I'm honest. <laughs> but, you know, maybe the new Assassin's Creed that's coming out soon or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a really versatile device. And I think if you're looking for that secondary headset, this is it. If you're looking for a cheap uh, way into VR, this is it as well. Here's a negative, right? This is a negative now. I still feel you need a very, very powerful computer to run the Quest 2. I think, actually, you need a more powerful computer to run the Quest 2 at its full resolution than the Reverb G2. Bearing in mind, guys, my um, graphics card is a 1080 Ti card, and I, I am going to be upgrading it very soon to a 3080 Ti anyway. So all this testing will be thrown out the window. I'll do it again. Um, but uh, honestly, I think I'm there. So let's recap. Oculus set up, uh, you know, your device, the Quest 2. Make sure that's on 1.7 or around that sort of, if it's a bit too much for your hardware, knock it down to 1.5 maybe. Make sure 90 hertz is nice. I've tried 80 hertz. Not really much of a difference in terms of performance, actually. I thought there would be, but there isn't. Then the tray tool. Make sure your asynchronous time warp is down to zero. Your multiplier, give it a go, put it at 0.8. I've got a mine at 0.7 at the moment, and I've still got a great field of view. And then in your quest uh, sort of uh, option, set the bitrate to 300. I tried mine at 500, and it uh, wouldn't have it. So, uh, you know, your look might be different. I don't know. Oh, honestly, this is great. I am sold on this headset. I wasn't sure whether I was going to keep it after this weekend, but you know what? With the amount of games that are coming out on the Quest 2, it, it really is. It's the PlayStation 5 for VR uh, in terms of the console world. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying out many games with it, but also using it as a sort of secondary, uh, uh, you know, PC-based VR headset, particularly for flying, because it has its own charm uh, that the reverb doesn't have in the sense of the smooth motion projection of the Oculus software. So there you are, guys. My goodness me. Yeah. I absolutely love this headset. I think it's fantastic. And it's a, it's just a marvel. And I really, I'm quite impressed with the build quality of it, actually, as well. I'm, it's, it's, uh, I'm getting a deluxe head strap very, very soon. So that will be here probably by tomorrow. Um, and all is well, actually. But as I say, Reverb G2, that's the one to get, guys. It really is. You cannot match 
that resolution, not even with the Quest 2, unless you super sample, and then there's no point because, uh, you know, you literally, your computer's going to be struggling. I can run the Reverb G2 at native resolution a lot easier than I can, can the Quest 2. The difference is, <laughs> is that the motion projection, you've got a 10 to 15 frame rate buffer, so there are some flights that I actually prefer to use the Quest 2. It's not a simple thing, guys, this uh, VR thing that we do. It really isn't. Um, but thank you so much to everybody who's helped out in the comments. And you know what? I, you know, there's a few times I thought, am I going to, you know, shall I keep the Quest 2 or shall I get rid of it? But I think there's so many of you on the channel that use this uh, device. I think, uh, you know, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more Quest 2 content as well as Reverb G2 content as well. It's all about the twos, isn't it? <laughs> of course, the Rift S as well. I'm going to keep the Rift S actually because I love that headset as well. And there's certain games uh, that uh, I think lend itself really well to that headset. So for now, I'm going to keep it. But, you know, I'm getting a bit twitchy. <laughs> I might sell it, but I think for now, I'm going to keep it because I think all three headsets are really great, to be honest. And uh, provide a different advantage over, over the other. So this is Lid Aerodrome. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to stop here. And uh, yeah, bid you farewell for this video. Please let me know in the comments, uh, you know, if I've missed anything, any more t tips and tricks. I'm all ears. This has been a fantastic experience today. And uh, yeah, the Quest 2, guys, it's a fantastic headset, I've got to say. And uh, yeah, take care. Have a great week and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye for now.